So you're studying for the SAT Math Level 2 Subject Test. You've come to the right place. I'm Dan from WeWillTeachYouMath.com. Guys, when you're using these videos to study, make sure you pause the video at the beginning when the problem first comes on the screen and try it on your own. Most of your practice should be done this way, actively and independently. Then, if after you try the problem on your own, you still find it tricky, that's when you watch the video explanation. In fact, you can use any resources that you have available to you to try to figure it out so that the next time a similar problem comes your way, you'll be ready. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. 9. How many integers are there in the solution set of absolute value of x minus 2 is less than or equal to 5? So the way to solve absolute value inequalities is to break it up into two separate inequalities. And just a hint, try to remember this because it's really helpful if you can. If it's less than, it's a conjunction. So this one is a conjunction. And if it's greater than, it's a disjunction. And the difference between a conjunction and a disjunction is that a conjunction is, an, is going to be an and statement. You're going to break this up into two separate statements. And they both have to be true, so it's an and situation while if it's greater than and it's a disjunction that's an or situation and what ends up happening for the conjunction I'm kinda of jumping ahead here but I, I really want you to have this background knowledge before you even start if this is a number line and you have a conjunction the answer is going to end up being something that's between two values and if it's a disjunction it's going to be the exact opposite it's going to be everything outside of that interval so that's an or situation. So conjunction, think and, that's less than. Disjunction, think or, that's greater than. Uh, but let's just apply it to this problem. So we have absolute value of x minus 2 is less than or equal to 5. So we're going to break that up. The first thing we do is just the way it is, except without the absolute value signs. x minus 2 is less than or equal to 5. Then the other one that we want to write is again x minus 2 without the absolute value signs but now we switch the inequality to greater than and we switch the 5 to negative 5 so changing the inequality and taking the opposite of the number on the right then we just solve both of these algebraically for x so here we'll get x is less than or equal to 7 and then here we'll get x is greater than or equal to negative 3 but now the question is, what do we do with these two statements? And that goes back to the fact that it's less than or equal to, which makes it a conjunction. So we have to deal with the situation when these are both true at the same time, x less than or equal to 7 and x greater than or equal to negative 3. So let's draw our number line. And if you see this without the number line and the answer is jumping out at you and you don't care to see this whole demonstration, fine. But I just want to do this for completeness here. We have... Well, let's just throw 0 on there, and then we have negative 3, maybe that's somewhere around here, and then we have 7, maybe that's somewhere around here. The endpoints are included because it's less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, so we'll include negative 3 and 7. And the interval that we're interested in is everything in between there because it has to be greater than negative 3 and less than 7. So how many integers are in there? Well, the difference between 7 and negative 3 is 10, but both endpoints are included, so it actually ends up being 11 integers. And if you don't believe me, make the list. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, make it all the way up to 7, and then count how many elements are in that list, and you'll see that there'll be 11 elements. Um, and again, just finally, had it been the other way around, had it been a disjunction, where it was greater than or equal to would be or so this interval between the two numbers wouldn't be included instead it would be everything that's less than negative three and everything that's greater than seven and um, then the answer would be e right it would be an infinite number because if you're going all the way to negative infinity and all the way to infinity there's going to be an infinite number of integers in that set so um, hopefully that helps give you a little more than what you would need to just solve this problem hi thanks for watching if anything's still confusing or you need a little extra help, drop me an email, leave a comment, or give me a call. I answer every message. And if you want to check out more videos like this, visit wewillteachyoumath.com. See you in the next video.